Some 20,000 Australians are affected by multiple sclerosis, the debilitating disease that can cause a slow decline, slow and painful decline and even death, and for which there is no known cure. But recently the life of a Canberra student has been saved by a new treatment for MS, which is now being recommended for younger sufferers who experience a rapid onset of the disease. Although the stem cell transplant procedure is widely available overseas, until recently Australian medical authorities have warned against this treatment for multiple sclerosis. But the remarkable recovery of 19-year-old Ben Lay has doctors wondering if they've been too cautious. Matt Peacock reports. Ben Lay had just turned 18 when he noticed a slight pain in his leg. It felt like my feet were numb, or pins and needles. Like, just pins and needles constantly, and just wouldn't go away. His stepfather, Don Cototti, himself a GP, became concerned. I said, there's some, definitely something wrong here, something not major, something major. I said, take him straight down the hospital. At Canberra Hospital, the diagnosis was made. Ben Lay had multiple sclerosis, a disease that attacks the protective sheath around the nerves in the brain and spinal column, usually over many years. Despite steroid treatment, a few weeks later, Ben Lay's body started shutting down. The onset was over a matter of days with weakness in his legs and then it progressed to weakness in his arms. And eventually his limbs were totally paralysed and he couldn't breathe without assistance. Ben Lay was rushed into the intensive care ward. A magnetic resonance imaging scan revealed a rapid onset of the MS disease with major lesions on his brain. If he wasn't in intensive care, he would have died. I was frightened. It was the most horrible thing. You don't bury your children. <laughs> With breathing assistance and some chemotherapy, his condition was stabilised. But it was only a modest improvement. I couldn't talk or move. I got, my eyes were open, but no one would notice that I was still alive. It was then that neurologist Colin Andrews thought of trying a treatment he'd only ever heard about from overseas, bone marrow transplant. That's a sagittal view. He was the perfect case because he had no other option, uh, so we had to take the risk. Go for a walk after this. Parents Don and Prue Katotti reached the same conclusion from their own research. We'd read about a fellow in Athens that had had stem cell that had done well. I think I yeah. think that was the case, wasn't it, Prue? Yeah. 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 So we did that. And you had Dr Andrews suggesting it, that you could look yeah. at this. I, I was all for it at that stage. Yeah, that's all we had. But initially, the Canberra hospital team said no. They wanted a consensus from the whole neurological department, which we tried to obtain at a meeting that we had, which didn't work out that well. Uh, and I remember having to go and say, look, I'm sorry, I can't get consensus from my colleagues. Uh, what are we going to do now? If we didn't ben, do that, could Ben could was he going to survive? Ben, ben was in intensive care, unconscious. It was a step in the dark and a challenge. We hadn't done something like this before. Although leukaemia patients have received this treatment for decades, MS trials in Melbourne ten years ago had poor results. But a European study of 900 people with autoimmune diseases who were given the treatment in the past decade included 345 MS patients, and the vast majority of them responded well. From that, we can work out the number of stem cells we've collected, and if it's enough, we'll go ahead. After consulting interstate colleagues, Canberra haematologist Michael Pidcock and his team decided to press ahead, following protocols established by Italian physicians. Doctors say it's like rebooting the patient's immune system. The first step is to gather some of the patient's own bone marrow stem cell. This is the marrow aspirate on this. Following some, uh, some chemotherapy and the administration of some marrow stimulating drugs, the, the patient's own bone marrow stem cells are harvested from their bloodstream on a machine at a, in, during a narrow window of time. 
These stem cells are stored in liquid nitrogen. Then a heavy dose of chemotherapy knocked out Ben Lay's immune system and remaining bone marrow cells. The marrow cells were re-infused a day afterwards and uh, following a period of, uh, of reduction of the cells in the blood due to the chemotherapy, the, um, the normal marrow regenerated like seedlings in a garden and produced normal blood cells after about 14 days. Come on through. It worked. Nearly a year later, a much healthier Ben Lay is undergoing an MRI scan to see just how effective the treatment has been. His doctors are jubilant. The major active brain lesions have disappeared. That's quite amazing that the scan has returned to this sort of pictures. Indeed. Fabulous outcome, really. It's, it's the most dramatic change I've ever seen in someone with MS, yes. It appears to have clearly saved his life, so we are very excited uh, about that. But then again, it may just be something that's peculiar to Ben. Australia's MS Society's consultant, Professor Bill Carroll, has hailed the result, but with reservations. I must say, however, it is still very experimental. The case of Ben Lay uh, is, is terrific for Ben, but may not be translatable to all people with MS. This caution from Australia's MS establishment angers Ben Lay's parents, who say the MS Society discouraged them from pursuing the treatment. It was just not, you know, we don't do it in Australia and we probably won't do it for 10 years because there's just not enough information around. I tend to think that maybe the whole medical system is too fixated on the pharmacological, pharmacological approach and not on getting permanent cures. So here I'm asked to right, lift my right leg and I can't lift it at all. And even here leaning forward using my abdominals, I can just lift my leg where now it's much easier. I can Kat Rochford now. shares the Katotti's anger. She has slower onset MS than Ben Lay but felt the expensive government-subsidised drugs prescribed for her did little. Can you now close your eyes and just keep stable? I'm a fitness instructor. I've got three kids and, you know, I'm having trouble walking and doing a lot of things. And I thought, I'm only 35 years old and I don't want to go down that track. On a trip to her native Canada, she heard of a friend, a golf pro with MS, who had seemingly successful stem cell treatment in Israel and she decided to go too. Okay, left side, I rang the MS Society before I went and they were adamant about not doing it and it wasn't effective and they wouldn't support me in it at all. This is still experimental and it's still being worked out as to which patients will benefit most from it and which patients, clinicians, would be prepared to take the risk to give their patients this sort of treatment. The MS Society's Chairman of Research, Professor Bill Carroll, warns against this sort of medical tourism. The rule of thumb would be that if you're being asked to pay a large amount of money from a commercial operation, you should think twice about it. Kat Rochford, though, has no regrets. It's not a cure, but I'm 100% better than what I was. There we are. Take a seat there, Ben. Ben Lay, too, oh, is well, walking actually. again. He's re-enrolled at school and is now planning a career. It's estimated he has only a 20% chance of a relapse. His remarkable recovery has made Dr Andrews and others wonder if Australia's approach to the treatment has been too conservative. Just pop your hands out in front. There have been patients that are now in nursing homes who are young with bad MS who I had contemplated before, but again... Uh, being conservative neurologists, didn't quite feel strong enough to take the plunge. But there have been cases prior to this where, I, in retrospect now, I wish, probably should have tried to do something. Just hold that one up hard. But the MS Society's Professor Carroll still urges caution. It's probably only worth considering in those cases with rapidly aggressive disease, uh, rapidly and severely disabling disease, as in Ben Lay's case, and where conventional treatments or currently available treatments have not been effective. For Ben Lay's family, there are no doubts at all. To me, it's a miracle. I mean, I've got my son back. I'm hoping next year I can get onto university and do either physics or archaeology. I've got life again. 
lot of people with a stake in that issue and that story. Matt Peacock with that report.